Welcome to Midwest Sportsnet. Hello, I'm Joey McWilliams. Joining me on the summit today is the head volleyball coach at Midland, Paul Gieselman. It's a privilege to get to visit with you today, sir. And I know it's been a busy weekend for you. You have a very busy week ahead. And so I appreciate you taking some time today. So let's not bury the lead. You all had a lot of great competition up in La Crosse, Wisconsin this past weekend up at Viterbo. The big one, though, had to be the rematch of last year's national championship match against Missouri Baptist. This time, however, the five-set match, and it was another five-set thriller, goes to you all to Midland. So talk about that. Yeah, Joey, it's great to be uh, on your broadcast here. First of all, thank you for having us. Uh, I'm I'm pretty good friends with the head coach at uh, Missouri Baptist and stuff, so we actually got together about – four years ago and decided to do a tournament, a four team tournament with us, uh, Missouri Baptist and Viterbo. And then each year we would find a team to fill in and we would just rotate it each year amongst our three teams. And uh, this, this year it was Viterbo's turn to host. And of course, you know, after the national championship match, after about three, four weeks, we called each other and um, said, Hey, looks like we're going to have a rematch. Uh, here in August. So we, I think both teams were excited about it. We've got a lot of respect for each other, you know, from that standpoint. Um, but, you know, Missouri Baptist, the thing that was really interesting about, about the match here on, on Friday was, you know, they have the exact same team that they had in the national championship match where we're, we're significantly different. We graduated three very talented players off of last year's team. And we're actually starting three freshmen in their place. So for us to to come out of that match with a with a five uh, five set win, I was really pleased with that. That that has to be very encouraging for you, I'm sure, as to what the the future holds. Some of those players, though, that that have come back, uh, some of the players that have been a a part of this team, really uh, have have come alive. I, I I mentioned Talia Flores with a double double in that contest. Hope Leinbach as as always has had a solid outing. I want to mention one other name too. Abby Ringler really came alive for you all, especially late. I mean, you found yourself down two one after the third set. Uh, she has a good fourth set, even better fifth set, including the last three points she gets from Leinbach assists as you all were up 12, 11, then 13, 14, 15 and take it home. Yeah, you're you're exactly right there. Um, she kind of struggled a little bit the first couple of games, and part of that is you know uh, freshman playing at the college level for the first time, and of course the defending national champs might have something to do with that also. <laughs> but we made a few adjustments um, with her. She was running a lot of sets in front of the setter the first three games, and the last two games um, we really pushed her behind. Felt we had a better match up there and stuff. And what a lot of people don't, Abby, um, you know, she's from Seward, Nebraska, fell fell a little bit under the radar, honestly. Um, you know, great athlete. When we did our jump testing and stuff, she's she's the best athlete on our team. But her skill development maybe lagged a little bit, and that's kind of why she fell under the radar. But I saw early on this kid has the potential to be pretty good. And uh, so for her to come in and in game four and game five, and like you said, the last three points of the fifth game, when really the pressure's all on, for her to step up as a freshman and do what she did was very impressive. Well, she helps you seal the deal there. You get the win, you come away, you remain undefeated. Oh, by the way, you also uh, were able to come away with a four-set victory over Viterbo on their home court up there, talking about that that nice little arrangement that you all have, and and a good win over a Grandview team that's struggling a little bit in the early season as well. But 8-0 and now on the season. Hope Leinbach, I want to go back to her because she's making some noise, at least nationally, second in the country in assists per set at 11.79. And, uh, you know, as a junior, she seems to really be, uh, you know, she she did well previously, but really even stepping it up a little bit more. Yeah, Hope Hope is one of our co-captains for the team this year. Um, you know, a lot of people see her and, and think she's a liability in the front row uh, because of her height and stuff. But in the setter position, the thing that she brings to the court that I value greatly as a coach is her leadership skills and really her being a, an extension of me on the court. You know, I want my, my that are to understand what the opponent's trying to do and how can we exploit that. 
And I think that's the mental part of the game is where, where Hope really has started to um, expand her game. And, and we saw that, Joey, actually last spring. Last spring, you know, we could see her really grow in confidence and kind of take charge of the team, even though she wasn't a captain last year, that type of thing. And then in the, in the national championship run uh, last April slash May 1st, um, she was phenomenal. I mean, she really was. I felt like I felt like her and uh, the Missouri Baptist setter were the two best setters of the national championships last year. Well, she's coming along this year as well. And again, leading the team, we're speaking now with uh, Coach Paul Gieselman from Midland in his 12th season with the program here on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please do subscribe to the channel. We talk a lot of NAI and Division II, as well as much small college sports in the Midwest and beyond. I want to mention a couple other players. We talked briefly about Talia Flores, double-double against uh, Missouri Baptist, right at 4.0 kills per set, just above three. Uh, digs per set as well, and, and another senior in Brooke Fredrickson. Uh, again, a little more than three digs per set, and why not a couple more? Let's let's talk about Maggie and, and Mackenzie Simpeck. I know I threw out a whole, a whole lot of names there, but I know that you know them all well. Yeah, well, first, Talia. Um, you know, Talia is a returning All-American for us. We we were fortunate to get Talia. You know, coming out of out of high school, a lot of people forget she was the number two recruit in the state of Nebraska, and Nebraska high school volleyball produces great players every year. So she went and, uh, you know, had division one opportunities, decided to go division one to start with and, you know, kind of got homesick and wanted to come back home. And we were just lucky that, that we were fortunate enough to convince her that, Hey, we can really help you, um, you know, develop your skill set and stuff. So, so we got Talia and Talia, honestly, she kind of struggled her first year a little bit, but part of it is she wanted to be a libero as a sophomore. And of course, you know, her, her skill set, we said, absolutely, Talia, we'd love to have you. So she played libero. And when I say she struggled a little bit, keep that in mind that she was the conference libero of the year. And I, and I didn't think she had a great season per se, because I know what her ceiling is. And so uh, due to some circumstances, during the off season, I went to Talia and I just really felt like we needed her to play six rotations, three being in the front row. And she was all in. She says, coach, whatever we need to do to help this team win, I'm in. And, you know, that says a lot about her uh, because she does care way more about the team winning than she ever does about her, her own personal accolades. But the thing that makes Talia great is when, when the, the lights are shining the brightest, Joey. She wants the ball. She's not afraid of the big moment. If if we're going to lose, you know, she wants to lose on on her touching the ball. Mm-hmm. She wants that pressure and stuff. And that's the sign of a great pre- player is being able to do it. You know, when it's when it counts the most. And we saw that this weekend. You know, you talked about um, the wins we had. I mean, we're talking. This last week, actually, it was four straight wins over ranked teams. You know, we beat College St. Mary, number 23. We beat Grandview, number 21. We knocked off the Turbo, as you said, number nine. And then, of course, the defending national champs and current number one team, Missouri Baptist. Talia, you know, she's the fiery person on the court that gets that done. Brooke Fredrickson, I will tell you right now, she's the unsung hero of this team, though. She is the player that does all the little things that, you know, some of it doesn't show up in the box score or the stats and stuff like that. But when you go back and watch film, you go, that was a heck of a play. And and I think she just is so, so much more relaxed this year that she's really come into her own as a player. We moved her from left side to right side last spring before the national championships and stuff. And it was, you know, it was something that just, the light bulb came on for her, but I think she's as valuable in our program right now as any of the players on the team. That's how well she's playing. And then you mentioned um, uh, the Simpec twins, both of them, you know, seniors, both are very good defensive players. They serve roles on the team, um, mainly serving standpoint. Maggie comes in, does play three rotations and has done a phenomenal job defensively. So, we really pride ourselves, Joey, on the 
we we might not necessarily be the most physical team at the net when you're talking about you know the top five teams in the country. You know, Viterbo, when you look at them warm up, you're thinking we just well start the bus because we got no chance. You know, they they look impressive hitting the ball. And when they're in system, you can't stop them. But what we try to do is be one of the best serving teams in the country, get get you know the opponent set her off the net, get them uncomfortable. Um, and then all of a sudden the hitting isn't quite as easy. And then of course our overall team defense, we take a lot of pride in that and really felt like last year we were one of the best defensive teams and that's what got us to the national championships. Well, coach, let me mention one more. And by the way, I, I feel like I know so much more about your program right now. Great insight. I mean, this is this is really enjoyable to go with the, you know, the video and the, and the stats that we get to you, see. You've done your research. You're doing a great <laughs> job. Well, I'll mention one more name then. Uh, I'll mention another freshman. We go from freshmen to soft or seniors to freshmen and, and then back and forth. Let's close out with a freshman, Delaney uh, Valanche. Uh, she is a, seems to be doing a, a very good job for you as well, keeping things going and, and you know, talk about wanting to get get and stay in system when you've got somebody that's got 3.43 digs per set and, and, you know, it's going to keep you going in the direction that you need to go. sounds like she's doing a good job in her first year. Yeah. Delaney, you know, being the starting libero in our program uh, is not easy because we ask a lot out of them and stuff. And on top of it, Delaney had to come in and replace a great libero. Um, our starting libero last year, uh, Jason Russell, was also one of our captains, and she had a senior year that that a lot of college athletes dream about. I mean, she really had a phenomenal senior year. So when she when she graduated, I really felt like Delaney had the ability to come in. I just how quick she was going to be able to pick things up and handle it and stuff. But you also have to remember that this is a young lady that I felt had the ability to play at some very good, you know, division two schools and stuff, but she wanted to stay close and she realized how talented our program is and stuff. So, so we were fortunate to get her and she has, she's just stepped in with a ton of confidence. And part of that comes to is she's surrounded by great players. You know, when you have Brooke Fredrickson and Talia Flores on either side of you, you know, that's going to give you confidence <laughs> yeah. because those yeah. are two, you know, very experienced players. So we're we're really happy with what Delaney's done as a, as a libero, and we're fortunate that we're going to have her for another three years after this. Um, but I do want to honestly, I want to mention two other freshmen, please, that have that have really done a great job for us. Jesse Moss out of Syracuse, Nebraska, uh, has been our starting left side hitter, replacing one of our our seniors from last year's national runner up team, and again making the jump from high school to college is a big jump. And she has just, she's a great athlete. You know, a lot of people don't know that she was one of the top high jumpers in the state the last couple of years and stuff. So I knew this, this girl had the athleticism and the ability to play above the net. The question is, is can we get her, you know, up to speed with how to play the college game and stuff. And she's done a great job. And she actually, she actually uh, injured herself, you know, minor injury, this weekend at the end of the Missouri Baptist match. And fortunately we had another young freshman that uh, we recruited heavily that was able to come in Cortland Schaefer out of Stromsburg, Nebraska. And Cortland just stepped right in and Cortland, again, another great athlete uh, plays high above the net, multi sport kid. You know, I'm, I'm big on multi sport kids mm -hmm. and she was able to step in and, and we didn't lose a beat. You know, she played she played the matches against Grandview and Viterbo. And honestly, her blocking against Viterbo, Viterbo's got a left-handed returning All-American that she was matched up against. And I was really impressed with how the freshman did. That, that has to be so encouraging for you to say, hey, listen, how, how much longer do we want to stick around here in the program? Well, <laughs> with, with freshmen like what you just mentioned, uh, at least another three years, I'm sure. <laughs> well, yeah, Coach... They're great kids and stuff. But, you know, the thing, the thing, Joey, that, that I have to do as a coach, you know, it's great being 8-0 and, and all of that stuff. Um, but for us, it's all about Sioux City. It's yeah. all about getting back to the national championships. And then once we're up in Sioux City, 
is, you know, how far can we go? And so it's constantly challenging our players. Don't get too high. Don't get too low. You know, you got to stay in the moment and you're getting everybody's best shot every night. And that's what I love. I mean, I want players that want to come to Midland because they want that challenge. Well, I, I, and you kept talking about playing recruiting and bringing in these girls from Nebraska. You keep winning that in-state recruiting title. And, and I know you go a long way because it definitely, you, you're going to have the quality players coming out of those Nebraska high schools. Coach, really quickly then, you talked about Sioux City. You're going to be there this weekend. It's not the same. I know we're not talking about the end of the season Sioux City trip, but still uh, quality opponents and, and you play against four good teams this weekend, but that's not all. That's Friday and Saturday. Prior to that, you have a, a match tomorrow against Peru State. And then on Wednesday, you start the GPAC schedule, which is uh, daunting in and of itself, and take on Mount Marty. So uh, a busy week ahead before things, even though it gets to be very intense in the GPAC, it's going to slow down a little bit uh, from, you know, not seven, eight matches <laughs> in a week. Yeah, I, I don't know who the guy is that scheduled uh, the <laughs> tournament this last weekend and then decided to add six matches this week because they ought to fire that guy. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> you know, but the thing is, we, we make no bones about it. Every year we expect to play one of the toughest schedules in the country because I'm not concerned about, you know, how many wins can we generate during the regular season. What I'm concerned about is can we challenge our players? Can we expose their weaknesses? You know, can we get our players to be uncomfortable so we can see how they're going to respond? You know, you, the last thing you want as a coach is you're just sitting here rolling along your players have never been been made to feel uncomfortable to be you know challenged because if if the first time they're uncomfortable you know when you get to postseason play you're in trouble so that's really why we scheduled you know the put together the schedule that we did and of course this week as you said uh, we got Peru State tomorrow night in a home match and and it's going to be exciting because we're handing out the national runner up rings and honoring that team you know, at right after the match. So the key there is, can we keep our, our players focused, right. you know, on the task at hand? And then, as you said, we turn around the next night and we have a, a GPAC road match at Mount Marty. And there's no such thing as an easy match in the GPAC. It's the, I, I tell everybody, it's the Big Ten version of NAI volleyball. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we literally are just like the Big Ten conference, but we're in the NAI. Um and then we we go up to Sioux City for for a great tournament that uh, Rick Pruitt at College St. Mary's has put together. It's kind of a, a pre-national championship tournament is what he's doing, you know, where, hey, you know, bring your team to Sioux City early September, see what it's like, and, and hopefully you get your team back there at the end of November and December for the national championship. So we, we are. We're playing four really good teams. Um a team out of Georgia that's receiving votes, you know, for the national top 25, we're going to open with them. And then really the big match of the weekend is Park University. I think Park University, they might be the best team in the country. They've got uh, two young ladies uh, from Egypt, I believe. They're sisters. Um, the one was the national player of the year two years ago. She was injured last year, didn't play in the national tournament and stuff, but both of them are back. They're healthy. So I, I, I think they might be the best team in the, in the, in the country right now. And so it's another opportunity for us to, to really measure where we're at, what do we got to get better at that type of thing. So as we get into GPAC play, and then hopefully, you know, uh, another run in Sioux city in, in November, December, we're, we're going to know what to expect because there's nobody that, that we're going to see up there that's going to surprise us with the schedule that we're facing. Right. I understand. Yeah, Coach, that and that park team not too far removed from a national championship itself. But I, I like the idea of going to uh, where the national championship is going to be played because it, it does. I mean, it, that's one of those things. Well, you put it right out there in front of the players. Would you like to be back? You know, and, and of course, fans, too, find out where to stay and what places to go to to eat. So that's yeah, all. it's, it's just a great, it's, it's a great concept uh, and stuff. And we're really excited about it. It's the first year of the tournament. And honestly, uh, the, the coach that's hosting it and stuff, he's already got a waiting list, you know, for teams that want to get wow. into it. That's cool. 
That is cool. Well, Coach Gieselman, thank you so much for taking time with us today. I uh, Anyone who enjoys Midland Volleyball needs to watch this and and uh, and subscribe to the channel, by the way, too. But to watch this, and uh, because this will definitely go a long way towards your enjoyment of the 2021 Midland Volleyball schedule. Coach, it's been a privilege to get to visit with you today, and I'm very thankful for you taking time with me today and success to you and to the Warriors this season. We will definitely be following you all. I appreciate it, Joey. Thanks a bunch for uh, not just for for giving us the opportunity to talk about Midland Volleyball, but covering the sport of volleyball, you know, as a whole. We Thank appreciate you, it much. Thank you. Thank you.